Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to start looking at some of the menus, tools, and other options that are available on the Expressway servers. Now, I'm going to do this on an Expressway core, but as I talked about in the first video, whether you're on a VCS, uh, Expressway core, or Expressway edge, it's all the same. Again, the difference is licensing. So whatever I do here, the same applies if you happen to be using a VCS or whatever. So this is what you'll see when you first log in. Now, notice right off the bat that for every Expressway C or VCS or whatever, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner here, you'll be able to locate two valuable pieces of information. Now, the first thing you see is the serial number, which is tied to all the licensing on this server. So you'll need that number if you have questions about your licenses or if you ever order new licenses and so forth. You'll also see the current version you're running, uh, which you may need to know from time to time as well. And by the way, you'll be able to see this no matter what you're looking at, no matter what page you're on or what menu option you're looking at, this information will always be available down in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, so we're gonna start out by going over some of these menu options. Now, I'm not gonna go over every single item today because it's just way too much information to cover in one video but we'll cover enough so that you can get sort of a broad overview of everything and so that we have a, at least have a sense of what's possible and where should we go to complete certain tasks. And then with each video after this one, we'll drill down and focus on different items. So let's start with the status menu. Now, every item you see under status is something that you use for troubleshooting different aspects of your environment. Okay, so for example, if you went to status registration, then you can view a registration by device or registration by alias, and you can see what endpoints are registered to this particular server. Or you could go to registration history and see the history of registration. Uh, you could not only see the unregistration attempts, but also the reason they unregistered, which might be uh, helpful for troubleshooting. Okay, I can go to calls, calls, or calls history. These are for troubleshooting call setup attempts, uh, whether they were successful or not. Different logs available here. And there's search history. It does a similar kind of thing. Uh, it helps you troubleshoot call setup issues. Now, local zone, zones, and bandwidth, and then uh, bandwidth links and pipes, all of these help you monitor bandwidth utilization. And it does this while calls are being processed uh, in real time. And then we're going to come down to logs down at the bottom here. Uh, these are some additional logs, such as event logs, which are uh, all of the event communications that are going on. You notice lots of information here, but uh, if you want, you can change the level at which these events are logged. So to see this real quick, uh, we're going to jump over here to maintenance and logging. And then here at the top where it says local event log verbosity. Now this refers to how detailed of a log you want to capture uh, on your event log. So one is the default, which is the lowest level, but of course you can go up to four. And then if you scroll down at the bottom of the page here under related tasks, uh, note that there's an event log link. And if we click it, uh, that'll take you back to the event log page where we just were under the status menu. And by the way, this is just page one of 248. And there's all kinds of information available to you, quite a bit. And remember, we're on the lowest setting here. This is level one. We could make this much more detailed, but uh, don't be too overwhelmed by this. Uh, let's, let's go up to the top here, I'll show you. So here, uh, what you can do, you can put in uh, keywords for filtering, and uh, if you click on more options here, you'll have additional ways to filter down to whatever information you're looking for. Anyway, a, a great place to go for troubleshooting. So again, status, these menu items are all about monitoring and troubleshooting issues in your environment. Okay, so we were just over at maintenance a second ago, so let's go ahead and jump back over there again because this is where uh, there's a lot of overlap in what uh, the status and maintenance menu options can do for you. So where status is about monitoring and troubleshooting, maintenance is all about the sort of day-to-day -day upkeep of the server. So this is where you do backup and restore of all your configurations. Now you can uh, upgrade the system here, and if I go to option keys, I'll show you all of the option keys that are installed on the server. So I can also come down here uh, to add additional option keys that I've purchased. Uh, so for example, 
Uh, here you can see I have zero room systems and zero desktop systems here. But I could buy option keys to be able to license this server uh, so that endpoints can register. And then I would just put those license keys in here and then uh, click the add option button down here. And uh, then that would add it to the top. Okay. Uh, other items we can look at under maintenance here, we can go to tools, uh, check pattern. Uh, we'll use this tool to test regular expressions, uh, which we'll explore in much more depth uh, in a later video. Keep an eye out for that one. And then port usage, we can use these to test local inbound and outbound ports and uh, remote listening ports. And then under uh, network utilities, we have some additional tools that uh, should be familiar to you. Uh, ping, traceroute, tracepath, and DNS lookup. Again, all of these built in to kind of help you maintain your environment. And uh, several other tools in here, but we, we don't need to talk about all of them just yet. Okay, so that's status and maintenance. Uh, again, they have a lot of similarity and even some overlap uh, between them, but uh, they do have distinct uses. Now everything else in between here is about configuring the Expressway server. So everything in the middle is about how you configure your Expressway to work in your particular environment. Specifically, system settings are your network-related settings. So this refers to things like uh, Ethernet, uh, IP. You can set up uh, static routes uh, for firewalls, the DNS settings. Time is your NTP settings. Uh, you can set up a SNMP. Uh, set up your clustering. If you have more than one expressway or VCS, you can cluster them together. Uh, external manager and provisional extension, things like that. These are all network-related items that you can configure. Uh, quality of service, QoS, etc. Okay? Okay, and then uh, configuration. Now, configuration is where engineers spend most of their time on a VCS or Expressway in order to configure this server to manage uh, your video network. So all of these settings affect how your endpoints register, uh, how your calls are routed, that sort of thing. Uh, these are your uh, call policies, uh, your call admission control, all of those settings. Okay, and uh, actually in the next video, uh, in actually the next few videos, uh, we're going to start looking more closely at configurations. In fact, in the next one, I'll spend the entire time talking about just the first menu item here, protocols. Okay, so we're going to take a deep dive into SIP and uh, H.323 and interworking settings here. So stay tuned for that. Okay, applications. Now, applications are those extra features that you can add into the server, um, functionality that maybe doesn't come straight out of the box, but you know something that you can add later. For example, you could add the Find Me option key. Uh, then you can enable that service here under applications. Hybrid services. Now, uh, hybrid services have to do with integration with uh, WebEx Control Hub. So if you're doing a hybrid integration between on-premise and WebEx, for example, B2B UA, uh, this is where you set up your Microsoft interoperability. So maybe you want to do an integration with Skype for Business. Uh, Skype for Business endpoints could call your SIP endpoints and vice versa. So you could set all that up here. Okay, so that's your applications. Okay, let's talk about users. Now, users really only refer to the administrators of this server. And you can either manually create your administrators or you can integrate with uh, like an Active Directory or some kind of LDAP service and import them that way. You can also set up single sign-on and so forth. Okay, all right, so that's about as detailed as we need to get, at least for right now. Uh, in the next video, we're going to dig a bit deeper into the configuration menu and talk about SIP h.323 and interworking. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.